Have you ever wondered if all the different dragons in How to Train Your Dragons universe can mate with each other? Stay tuned because I'm about to cover this possibility. You have McGann, THE fangirl. Make sure you subscribe and check back every week for new fandom videos. Okay, this is another off-script free talking video, and there are potential spoilers for How to Train Your Dragon 3. I don't really know, the early release thing wasn't happening anywhere near me, so I haven't seen it yet. But I did see things on the Funko website that made me go, huh. Long story short, they posted pop figures for these things that they call night lights. And is it just me, or do they look like some perfect mashup between the Light Fury and the Night Fury? I think that's exactly what happened. But even though these guys are like, disgustingly cute. Uh, I'm kind of wondering now if a Night Fury and a Light Fury are two separate dragon species, which the entire trailers for the movie pretty much imply, how are these two species of dragons able to mate with each other? Because everything we've seen throughout the movies kind of suggests that dragons tend to pick their mate based on what they look like. Or do they? Maybe that's just an assumption I've had this entire time because the more I think it over in my head, I can't really think of seeing any dragon couples in the movie just maybe some mommies and babies together. So I went to the How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World website and unfortunately it's here taunting me with this see it three weeks early. I tried. There are no Fandango friendly theaters within like a hundred miles of me. And by the way, if you haven't seen this Lost Edition tapes with Kit Harrington, it is hilarious. Totally worth your time. But if you go over to explore, we have the first thing that pops up is the Dragonpedia. So I kind of want to go through here sort of live-ish. Okay, first the Light Fury. We have the different like D&D stats, I like that. All right, by what they're describing here, it kind of sounds like the Light Fury is just a different color of a Night Fury. And maybe that is the case because they do look really similar. And I believe all these spikes on Toothless were from where Hiccup's mother sort of activated that. No, wait, she got them to split in half for those tight turns. He had the ridge already. So, okay, they're probably a different-ish type of species then. We see a lot of things throughout evolutionary history where they're very similar yet very different. This looks like the case here. Oh, aren't they so cute together? Yeah, and Hiccup has these two little notches inside his ear. Are these his ear? Are these his ears? I don't really know. But his head shape is definitely a little different. He's got some different things going on between the ridge and these two boop 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 boops. But back to the Dragonpedia, I just want to get an idea of some of these different dragons we see because the weirdest thing about How to Train Your Dragon is how many dragons exist in this one tiny space. Like we see the Bewilder Beast, who's the king of the dragons and can command them all and tell them what to do, similar to the queen dragons. But they're so huge, they're like an anomaly and all these other dragons don't look anything like one another. Like you would expect all these dragons in one place to be very similar. Maybe different color schemes like you would see in tropical parrots or something, but I don't know. It, it just seems like there's way too many types of dragons all converging into one space. And the more you look at these, and some of these are like really cool, and some of these are just like... <laughs> They look like such monstrosities like this one. <laughs> Looks literally like meat lug here bred with something else and it just got this poor amalgamation of a dragon. I almost said dinosaur, gosh. And the more I look through here, the more I think maybe that is the exact case is that we have this small-ish population of dragons. I know there's hundreds of them in there, but for how many exist in that space and how many different types there are, maybe that is what they're doing. They're crossbreeding and that's why we're seeing such diversity and so many strange strange things in all these dragons. I'm kind of curious how far down this goes. Load more, load more. I think we're out now. Ooh, we have some that are locked. Interesting. But uh, for instance, the Timberjack here looks a lot like Hookfang, at least in the horn area. And there's lots of these guys where you see similar features recurring, like Rhino Nose, Rhino Nose, Rhino Nose, Rhino Nose. Rhino nose, rhino nose. And it seems like we're just getting all these different types of mutations because A plus B doesn't necessarily equal AB. It can equal C, it can equal Q, it can equal F. And so we've got all these like, look at this bizarre looking guy. Tell me he's not a mixture of something. But we've got all these strange combinations of dragons because they keep going and crossbreeding and creating more dragons and weirder dragons. And that's why we don't see just one or two types of dragons and Hiccup sitting there with a very 
very small notebook comparatively. Because you would think after hundreds of years of living on Burke and all this other stuff that they've been doing to catalog the dragons that they would know all about every single one that ever existed, but they keep finding more. Well, why is that? Well, because somebody keeps making new and different dragons. And if these cutie little nightlights don't help to prove some of that, I don't know what would. But again, I haven't got to see How to Train Your Dragon 3, so if you have and this is anywhere in the ballpark of correct, I would love to know in the comments. Again, everybody be aware there might be spoilers in the comments, so tread lightly. And yeah, that was basically it today. I just kind of wanted to ponder on this out loud and have a little bit of a one-sided discussion, at least so far, and sort of get the ball rolling and get the thoughts going and maybe I'll flesh this out into a very big, broad, full theory sometime in the near future. But hey, if you like these free thought, non-scripted videos, let me know because they're pretty quick and easy to make and I can do them on all sorts of trailers and such that are coming up in the future. Anyways, you've been listening to McGann Ramble On. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time because it might not be reality, but theories are more fun. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.